All right, um, one more video on differentiability, and this one I'm just going to do a, a quick example. So we're going to take a function, f of x, y. We're going to do, let's do x squared times y at the point 1, 2. And we're going to try to do two things with it. We're going to try to find the tangent plane. And we want to show that f is differentiable. Well, at this point, right? OK. Now, um, you might think that finding the tangent plane is good enough, but once you've found it, you still need to show that it gives you a good linear approximation. Um, so let's do the tangent. So for the tangent plane, Um, so first we need a point on the plane. So our point is going to be, well, x is 1, y is 2, z is f of 1, 2, so 1 squared times 2. So our point is 1, 2, 2. Uh, a normal vector, so the normal vector is this is one way to kind of do it. The normal vector is given by the x derivative at 1, 2, the y derivative at 1, 2, the z component is minus 1. Okay, so let's just kind of do that as rough work over here on the side. What's the x derivative? The x derivative at xy is 2xy. The y derivative is x squared. Um, so when I plug in the numbers for the x derivative at 1, 2, I'm going to get 2 times 1 times 2. I get 4. For the y derivative, I just get 1 squared. So I have 4, 1, minus 1. All right. So that means that my plane is given by 4 times x minus the x-coordinate of our point plus 1 times y minus the y-coordinate, so y minus 2, um, minus 1 times z minus the z-coordinate, so z minus 2. And that should be 0, right? It's kind of standard equation for a plane. Uh, the other way you could do this is, is you can, you know, just like some people kind of at some point memorize um, the this sort of standard form for a tangent line, you can do the same thing for a tangent plane. Um, you can say, well, that z should just be the linear approximation. Remember, the linear approximation is f at 1, 2 plus fx at 1, 2 times x minus 1 plus fy at 1, 2 times y minus 2. And so that gives you 2 plus 4 times x minus 1 plus 1 times y minus 2. OK? So you can set it up like that. No problem. Um, now, how do we make sure that this plane gives me a good approximation? Of course, you can compare the two and make sure that they work. Um, and, and one thing to keep in mind is that this is my, my linear approximation at x, y. So how do, we, how do we check that our function is actually differentiable? How do we confirm that this is a good linear approximation? Um, well, we can do this. We have to show that the limit as h k goes to 0, 0, f of 1 plus h 2 plus k minus the linear approximation at 1 plus h 2 plus k. 
over the square root of h squared plus k squared, we need to show that, uh, that this limit is zero. So let's start with the numerator. Let's see what we can say. So, so f of 1 plus h, 2 plus k, is 1 plus h squared times 2 plus k, right? So 1, 2h, h squared, 2 plus k. So this is going to give me 2 plus 4h plus 2h squared plus k plus 2h k plus h squared k. All right. What does the linear approximation at 1, 2 look like? At that same point, 1 plus h, 2 plus k. Okay. So I'm just going to take x equals 1 plus h and put it in here, which just leaves me with h. I'm going to take y equal to 2 plus k and put it in there, which leaves me with just k. So I'm going to get 2 plus 4h plus k. All right. and, and now I'm subtracting these, so what do I get if I subtract? So the difference... is going to be uh, 2h squared plus 2hk plus h squared k. And there, there are a number of ways that you could tackle this, but one way you might think of this, and again, you know, I just want to give you the idea of how this works. I won't ask you to do one of these proofs of differentiability because they they get messy in a hurry, but I could factor out an h, leave me with 2h plus 2k plus h squared. Oh, sorry, that one of the h's is gone, right? h times k. Okay, and, and if you think about dividing by h squared plus k squared. Well, one of the things you might notice is that, and again, maybe we work with absolute values here just to kind of, it makes the inequalities easier to deal with. Um, if, uh, you know, the bigger that k gets, the bigger the denominator gets, so the smaller this thing gets overall. So in particular, if k was zero, this would be much bigger than that. Um, so, if, but if k is 0, this is just the square root of h squared, which is just the absolute value of h, right? But now you can cancel. This, uh, this absolute value of h cancels with that absolute value of h, um, and you're left with um, 2h plus 2k plus h times k, right? And so if I'm trying to convince you that this whole thing is going to go to zero as h goes to zero and k goes to zero, um, I think I've done it, right? Because this is smaller than that, and clearly this is going to go to zero as h and k go to zero. Uh, and so that's one way to confirm that this particular function is differentiable. Um, now, on the other hand, the, the, the kind of the smart thing to do here is to use a theorem. So we mentioned in a previous video that uh, a s can one condition which is much stronger than differentiability is, is continuity of your first order partial derivatives. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say much stronger, but certainly it implies differentiability. And if you look over here at these two first order partial derivatives, quite clearly these are continuous functions. They're polynomials, right? Polynomials are continuous in any number of variables. Um, and, and since you have continuous first order partial derivatives, differentiability is automatic, and so, you know, this is kind of a waste of time. Nonetheless, I think it's useful to see how it works at least once in your life before you forget about it and move on. Um, and uh, so uh, with that, let's forget about it and move on to the next video.